Shit. It's a great day for people, people of all races. I'm glad you tuned in. Current events, movies, and music to your families and friends. This afterpiece theater, the name of the show. So without further ado, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. What's up, guys? It's your boy Disaster. I know I've been gone away for a minute, but now I'm back. And I got plenty of things to talk to you about, tell you. Um, I want to make sure that now that I'm back and I'm doing things uh, a little better than I used to do because I'm a little bit better skilled at it now, um, I want to bring to you, you know, stories that you may or may not have heard in, you know, local media or wherever you're from. Just bring some things to light so that it's uh, easier for people to understand where I'm coming from and the things that I see and take a look at, maybe talk about them a little bit and see if I can get you interested into those things. Here we go. First thing I want to talk about is this guy named Kelly Thomas. Uh, he was a mentally retarded kind of homeless guy, and uh, he was beaten to death by cops. They tased him, they beat him, they hit him with sticks, all kind of fines and waivers. It was horrible. The guy died after the beating, and he was, he was, they have it on tape where he's like, Dad, 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 help me get these fucking idiot cops off me. That's horrible, man. His father has to live son's last words being, Dad, Dad, help me. A lot of things in America are messed up. And it's sad to see that the people who are supposed to protect us are actually sometimes the people who are doing the most harm to us. A lot of people ask me, this, how do you feel about it? You know, you being a black guy and all, police probably mess with you all the time. You know, you're just trying to eat some donuts or something, and they pull up on you hungry. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I direct them to the nearest Dunkin' Donuts. But in your case, it may be different. I think a lot of times what happens is police get a little overzealous in the job that they're doing. We understand as people that you know, police do a job in keeping us safe or protecting the rights and freedoms of people. But in that same breath, you can't overstep your bounds and start beating people. I mean, in some cases, people are being beaten to death. I've seen pictures of Kelly Thomas. It looks like they beat him about the face with golf clubs and then stuck hot irons on it. They're horrific pictures. I would never want someone to beat me within an inch of my life. I see a lot of people on the YouTube sites talking about we need to go find these cops and take up arms and retaliate in some sort of way. I think this is what they want, though. If we do that, doesn't that give them more of an authority to come into your homes and take your guns and put you under arrest and, and beat your children? I, that's what it seems like. I mean, why would you do these crazy oddball things in order to rile people up? I think sometimes when people get power and they never had it before, it gives them a little something where they think they're one level above everyone else and that their actions go without consequence. That's not true. If you want to see the video, I have it in the show more portion. Just click that, pops down, more info for you. Gotcha. I met this chick at the bar. We did our little thing, went our different ways. I saw her at the bar the next week. You know, I'm a little tipsy. I want to talk to her a little bit. So I came up with this smooth con. I said, hey, man, why don't you let me get some re-entry like a NASA satellite? She smacked me. There is a NASA dead satellite that weighs 6.5 tons that's about to re-enter into our atmosphere on Friday. The NASA scientists are saying that 26 pieces of this deadly raining fireball is going to come down from the sky and actually make it. So it's going to hit something. They say the chances of you being hit by the falling debris is about 3,200 to 1. I don't care where you live. That's bad odds. I don't want to be anywhere near anybody that gets hit by a satellite. I'm talking about flaming, raining metal from the sky. Catastrophe. Death. Disorder. Chaos. Dead poodles. No filet mignon for them. Somebody's gonna get it. I just hope it's not you. It's not gonna be me. I got NASA's new space field time vortex generator around my house. So any kind of raining debris will just boink, bounce right off. NASA's funding was cut. Fuck. I'm staying at your house. Little naked titty teddy NASA satellite reentry slumber party. When I heard this, I was thinking to myself, this is the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. Why would you even do this? But two Americans went to Iran to go hiking in the peaceful mountains they have there, which is probably like this big. They got captured and for about two years have been imprisoned in Iran. They were set under a $1 million bail. I don't really know what they were doing, if they were having sex or maybe talking too loud, fornicating. The woman probably had her face out, see her all of her nose and nostrils. I think you'd be put to death over there if you show too much cleavage. And by cleavage, I mean anything under the shin. If I was in Iran 
and the police stop me, I think I'd rather have them kill me than be put in an Iran prison. Because in jail, the likelihood that you're going to get raped is pretty high. In Iraqi jail, the likelihood that you're going to get raped is promised. So, and over in Iraq, I think they don't believe in having clip wieners. So that means you're going to be taking a big banana boat in a poop chute, probably with anthrax under the skin. Who wants that? I don't want no anthrax fucking. Please don't fuck me in my ass with an anthrax pack between your penis foreskin. Oh, God, please no. So they got out and they spent the time with their families, which is fantastic. It's very good that they were allowed to leave this horrible shit ball of a country that's backwards as fuck, like 200 years behind. Okay, recently, the Pope said there's some bad fish in the church. And by bad fish, he means some perverted child molesters. Because sometimes when you want to preach the word of God, it's just not right unless you have your penis in a nice warm boy butt. I say 17 Hail Marys. Yeah. Oh. I find this funny because if the Pope knows about these bad fish, he needs to pluck them from the pond. Not relocate them from this pond to the pond next door. Well, hold on. Let me slow up a minute. Why don't Catholics... Just allow themselves to have sex. You know what would happen? There would still be priests molesting boys. Problem is that people who are into molesting children might see fit to go into a Catholic religion so that they can do that and have free reign to do so with no kind of consequences. I'm not saying all priests do this. I'm just saying some. But even knowing of those few handfuls, the Pope has the power to excommunicate those guys from the church and then they won't have the power of being a priest or whatever you are to be able to molest children. And they say we're made in God's image. Ooh, I'll just stop it. Okay, so on the eve of the National Bullying Summit, which I guess is something that you're bullied into going to because I couldn't see any other reason on going to a summit about bullying. I'm going to give you a hint or a little insight about bullies. I used to be a bully beater upper. You can ask any one of the people that I grew up around. Anybody messed with my friends, you were bigger than them, or that they couldn't protect themselves against, now you're my challenge. You see what I'm saying? And you don't want me as a challenge. But that's not the trick I was trying to tell you. The trick is, is that you get about eight or nine of your friends, and you get baseball bats, and you find this bully, and you beat the dog shit out of him. You beat him and taste his ass like the cops did Kelly Thomas. But anyway, this 14-year-old New York boy killed himself because he was being bullied. This says to me that if you're weak enough to listen to what other people are saying to you, that you're the type of person that would off yourself at the drop of a hat anyway. Now, I'm not gay, so I don't know a whole lot about gay people. I don't have a problem with them being gay. Just don't suck any dicks around me, and we can be friends. And I give one accidental pat on the ass rule. One, you, if you're gay and you accidentally pat me on the ass, I'll let one slide. Two, and I'm going to knock you straight. But if I know you're not gay, you can just pat my ass all the time. I'll even help you gay people out. Being gay for a dude can't be that bad. So you got like 18 zillion gay dudes fucking each other. That's like a big gay plethora of penises everywhere. Lesbians just scissoring and smashing clits together all over the planet. So it must be good to be gay because you have an open free reign to just have sex with whoever the fuck you want to. Not like a sad, 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 sad... Monogamous people. So if you're gay, just be gay and stop worrying about what people say or feel about the way you wear your fruity pants and flop your wrists around and shit. Nobody cares. Just be gay. Be you. Be happy. Be fucking flamboyant. We don't care. Gay. Joy. Suck that cock. Okay. So there's an inventor named John Kansas. This guy was trying to find a cure for cancer. Um, he basically figured out that if you insert certain metals into the body and then flood the body with radio waves, that the radio waves will detect certain cells and destroy them, leaving the healthy cells, the cancer-free cells, perfectly fine. That's awesome. That's a great inventive way to use your technological or advanced genius to make something for the world. Second thing he created. This man has figured out a way to burn salt water. He didn't try to do this on purpose. It was an accident. But he found a way to do it. I have the link up in the show me more down here. You just click show me more. It pops down. You see the video the link. You click it. Pop takes you there. You see the video. Damn, thanks, disaster. But yeah, so this guy figured out a way to burn salt water. Now, this is cool because right now we're in an energy crisis. You know, we're going to war for oil. I mean sovereignty, and we're you know over here trying to get sovereignty, and there's more sovereignty over here. Freedom, republic. 
But imagine if we could actually make a combustion engine that will take salt water. Salt water is the most abundant thing we have on the entire planet. We'll never run out of it, ever. And the only reason I'm telling you about it is because you will never hear about them ever again, ever anywhere else. You know why? Because they're going to buy the patents for that shit and you'll never see it ever again. Humanity. This guy's helping humanity. And they will take it and you'll never see it ever. You'll die of cancer and you won't have a water salt car that you can drive 28 miles to the gallon on. You know the reason? Because too much money is tied up in big oil. And too much money is tied up in all these other type of projects the government has going on. If we don't start investing in ideas like this, instead of just buying them and shelving them so no one can ever work on them ever again, we'll never advance. What's happening is the people at the top are still making money because they're designating the trends of what comes out and what happens underneath them. So we only know and only buy what we think is the newest, greatest, latest thing when there could be something better than that, more cheaply made, more easy to use, and more easily accessible to tons of people. But we'll never go those routes because to them, it's a loss of money. And they won't see the error of their ways until there's utter chaos on the planet because we have no more natural resources and we're killing each other for diamonds. I'm sure once the oil runs out, we'll find a way to make our car run off of diamonds and gold and baby fetuses. So, I don't know if you're a big Star Wars fan, but I am. Star Wars, to me, was like an amazing fantasy. So, it kind of sparked my imagination. Now, seeing all those movies that I loved back then, you know, revisited, touched up, crisp. I mean, when Darth Vader is talking to the old guy in the ship, and I don't know his name because I'm not a fucking geek like that, but he, you can see the oldness in his face. He looks old like he's wearing a diaper. You can smell the shit just looking at it from the Blu-ray. It's, oh, he must stink because he looks old like mothballs and banana skins. When I was young, I thought Darth Vader was pristine. With this new Blu-ray, it scratches this shit all on his helmet. Was he just in a fight or something with? Where is that footage? I want to see some of the extra shit. Speaking of extras, there's like two or three discs of, of just ridiculously long amounts of Star Wars stuff that you really have to be a Star Wars nerd to get into. In which case, I did. It was fantastic. Beautiful. Just hours and hours and hours of Star Wars trivia and ads and people doing silly shit with Star Wars stuff. It's really, really good. It's, it's almost worth the $80. It is worth the $80 that you'll pay for it. Go get that. And then that way, you can send me some videos back and go, Damn, man, thank you for telling me to get that. Now all I need is a Blu-ray player. So thank you for spending your time with me and... Hey, Weather. What, you want a rematch? <laughs> Thank you for spending your time watching my video for you. Um, please rate and subscribe my videos. Click the like button if you like. If you don't, don't click anything. Just watch the next video, and if you like that one, click like. Cool. But make sure you subscribe and you come back and see me again. My name is Disaster. You've just been through Disaster Peace Theater, and I hope I see you back here again real soon. Peace. Hey, weather.